entering at the cabin with Nisha. Hi, Misha here, and now we're on to the third episode in our winter cabin review, looking back at early videos from this channel, or videos that were very influential, important on this channel, or simply embarrassing videos, which we will get to some of those. And the first two times we looked at Kalashnikovs. So, this time... Let's focus on AR-15s. And while it did take a few months for AKs to appear on Mishiko, at that time known as Plinking 101, it would actually take a year and a half for the first ARs to show up. But don't worry, we've done a number of AR videos since that time to make up for it. So with that, let's go back to... New Year's 2013, or rather, December 2012, I suppose. And look at the ARs I had at the time, and then we'll come here and look at these. Also, this is the first video I'm going to have to do some editing on, because it uh, YouTube didn't like it. There's a couple of things that were okay back at the time, for example, with magazines that aren't okay now. So, apologize for the cuts, but it also means we can take breaks and bounce back and forth, and that should make the the um, director's narrative a little easier, perhaps. As always, if you could, like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to help support us, there's Patreon, and we do live streams now. All right, we're starting a little thing here for New Year's on the AR-15, so everything I've starting done so far has been there, AK or submachine gun. Channel. We'll start with the first civilian AR, an SP-1. This one was made in 1967. I always like the early. So it has a lot of the older features. Still do today. It has the three prong hider. These are no drain hole handguards, as they're called, but you can't see it from the outside. There is no drain hole in the butt stock screw, although I don't think you can see it, but it is a solid butt plate. No trap door. And one pistol grip, just a standard 20 round mag. This is a Nodak triangle charging handle I just threw in as a non-permanent modification because I think they're kind of neat. Also, just as a non-permanent, I've got an original M16 fully chromed bolt carrier group in there. Actually, with the do you still have that bolt carrier group? Light. You've seen it in a few of my uh, guns. Uh, improved light flathead modified uh, uh, firing pins. Hey, talking Basically, these cold. were made. All the slab sides, you'll see yeah, people advertising SP-1s yeah. as a slab side as if it's a feature. All of them were, up through the 80s. Even when the A1 was invented, everything else, they were still, Colt was producing slab side lowers. They were all slab no sides, but the markings here. did change. And it has, originally has a screw. I put in this push pin. I just think it makes this assembly like easier and looks too. more correct. But of course, the original M16s were even different. They had a recaptured pin. Well, not I've had this one for a little bit now. I like it because of the early features. It does have an edge water in it. Of course, it's a non-chrome line barrel. That being a and it does have the proper twist to the gas to uh, the early guns. It's getting late, so we're not going to shoot this one, but we are going to shoot a couple more cool retro the ARs, as they're called. Night. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, this is a carbine I was meaning to build for many years. It's a... Pretty close replica of a Colt XM177E2, often called the, the Car 15 or sometimes the Commando. These were used in Vietnam. I remember doing that. Built vaguely. this one from one of the surplus M16A1 kits that were available a couple of years ago. The upper and the bolt group and all that came from there. Yeah, the handguards right are original the, Colt. After the barrel bands, early handguards. So the didn't have barrels. The barrel is a lightweight profile barrel from. Um, uh, J and T, I believe, yes. It was that and way, but it wasn't quite a true Prominently attached, five-inch extension. Had a one and nine At first, I was going to use one of the um, the fake moderators done by Brick, and the, they were excellent made. Uh, very solid steel, very close to the original, but that's kind of the problem. 
they were solid steel and it added about a pound of weight to what I wanted yeah. to be a lightweight carbine. So then I just decided really to go with the moderate quite a bit of weight. You know, decent enough extension. Those five and a half. The butt stock is a two position. It is a fiber light. Originally I had a still four have position stock on one reproduction metal stock. But I found this two position Colt original fiber light from the eighties, so I thought original Colt better than modern reproduction so why not I'll explain that when we go back to the table one thing I, I did do thinking. different and I did this intentionally I just like it I put a straight slip ring most of the E2's if not all of them did have the tapered delta however it also helped a lot of the Colt carbines that came after in the 650 series 660 all that 670 did have straight tape uh, and Slipping. to be fair, the original they, they XM just 177 had a straight room, too. Anyway, I've got a correct 20-round mag in it, correct A1 pistol grip. And yes, these did have the uh, the teardrop forward assist. That would be the E2 part of it. And this isn't a correct, I didn't mention earlier, but it is an 11.5-inch burrow, which is correct. And I did have the uh, no bayonet lug, which is also correct for one of these. I didn't mm -hmm. have the flashing removed. Maybe I will. It's just yeah, that's something you know, that always you can bugs go crazy me on the with replicas. details. But I really I just wanted to have a lightweight carbon that was a XM out. replica, and I'm very happy with it. It shoots well. You can see there's still some anti-seize compound on it from screwing the barrel in. Need to get that cleaned up, as it's just been pointed out to me. Hey, I don't see it, so it doesn't bother me. Deal. Well, we're gonna back here at the table. I didn't want to drag out the SP-1. You've seen my SP-1, and I actually do have a different one from in that video a long time ago. Just a little bit earlier style, a little bit better condition, but we're on camera. We've talked about that many times. Again, I just I like the earlier ones. But I did want to talk about my XM-177. The problem with these, we've never really had straight up just parts kits or complete guns. There are the Colt SP-1 carbines, but they're not really correct either. So I built that gun back then, but I was never 100% happy with the barrel because it wasn't the correct profile, not really, and it was a 1 in 9 twist. So I ended up trading around a bit, ending kind of settling on this Troy XM177E2. Is it the best clone, the most authentic that's ever been on the market? No, but it's pretty good. And one thing I wanted to mention in more detail is the stock. When I mentioned going from a metal 4 position to a fiber light two position many of you were probably thinking why didn't i just swap the stocks around why why not keep the two position tube on that gun and swap stocks well that's because back then we were still at the tail end of the whole mill spec versus commercial tube because of colt and other things for years ar manufacturers third parties made a fatter tube and that two position and four position were different specs the two position was mill spec, the four position was commercial spec, and the metal stock that I had was for the commercial. So you really couldn't put it on the two position. If you did, it'd rattle around really, really bad. Luckily, the whole commercial tube thing has kind of more or less gone away. But I just wanted to fill that in because uh, I'm sure some were wondering as to the kind of flash hider. Finally, manufacturers like Troy and others made a pretty authentic replica hider, but also hollowed out like the other extensions. So it is kind of the best of both worlds. Not too heavy, but it also does the job of both looking right and, um, and uh, making it have an overall length of 16 inches. Because back then, replica parts were just harder to come by. The replica game had been underway for a while, but... It uh, still wasn't too mature. And another nice thing about the Troy, you have more authentic style markings on the side and the front of the magwell. And I like where they put their maker's mark kind of under the trigger guard. No, they, they did these quite well. Again, not perfect, but it works for me until maybe one day I get an original. You never know. This is my uh, M16A1 clone. Really one of my favorite shooters. I bought this upper back when they were still available. It's a later A1 upper around with the chrome line barrel, of course birdcage flash hider. It did come in black, which is common for these that were refurbished back in the 80s. They would parkerize in black. It was National Guard. And sometimes uh, you know, a few A2 parts would sneak in. 
This one has an A2 dust cover, if you notice, but otherwise it's A1. It has the uh, later style butt stock with the trap door. More of a matte finish, too, on those later stocks. Get a later style sling that was on my SP1 on it. Still have a 20 round mag because I like 20 round mags, quite frankly. Yep, holds one box of ammo. It does have yeah. an M16 bolt carrier group in it. And by this that is I a mean Nodak, back then a a one lot of lower, AR and they do offer them ones. in gray or black. And back then, Nodak very was nice lower. really only supply. I'm very happy with If anything, it's too tight, which is, you know, not bad. You can always take material off. It's much harder to add it. And it does have the correct A1 pistol grip. For a while, Century was doing the C15A1s, which are quite similar to this, but... Yeah, those Century guns those were nice, gone. but they did have they quite good commercial nice made later barrels. Cold parts, just as this one is. A good I've bike. always liked the A1. Just the lightweight, the long, very reliable gun. This one was probably, at least the upper was probably made in the 70s. Yeah, I'm going to say, I, I think maybe late Vietnam. Vietnam. But they were just sharing ARs today, and this is the next one in the series. Fun. Okay. Next up, moving a little more modern, we have an M16A2 clone. I sort of have that gun still and sort of don't. The M16A2 was developed the in the 80s. It was an improved version, in, improved in quotes, I will add. I still prefer the A1. But yeah. it um, had more adjustable sights. I'm going to turn it around in the wrong direction. Here and here. My nose was different running. apertures. It really was getting cold out there. Had a the heavier sunset. profile barrel in front of the Is front it just side. Just that barrel never makes sense. Round I, hand I know the reason, which I do think are an improvement over the front. Really 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 skinny underneath. I know the reason, but it's too weird. Tapered delta ring. Same bolt carrier, same basic internals. Has it a full fence through. lower, just like an A1, but it has reinforcements here. And back here. It generic. also has a round forward assist. It has a longer butt stock. Same trap door in it. Just several changes. The A2 grip is also. Some people hate that. My A1 clone, on the other hand, is basically the same. I might have swapped furniture. I remember I did upgrade the furniture, but I honestly can't remember if that was before or after we did that video. But the upper itself is the same. Again, the lower, I can't remember if I played musical lowers. I've still got it. It might be on this gun or the other. Not like I can see serial numbers. But no, this has been my A1 for a very long time now, and it's a good shooter-grade gun. This is the original Colt barrel, 1 in 12 twist. This would have the chrome-lined chamber and bore, later production, as I said. And not having the flashing would not be correct. This actually does need the flashing on the side base. So, again, it's, it's a complete unit that came from the National Guard. It's been rebuilt, of course, but, yeah. The only real non-cult part is the replica lower, because the original lowers are machine guns. But, no, I've had a lot of fun with this gun, and it has the later style so-called seat belt. Sling on it. This is a two-point silent you, sling, which is a cut. common issue. Built this gun from an ATM lower, just a nondescript A2 type lower. This is a Colt government profile one and seven twist upper with Colt bolt yep. carrier group, Colt, Colt handguards, Colt butt stock. Pretty much a standard. Does not have a removable carry handle, just like the A2s. <laughs> gun kind of has a long and interesting story, but basically, short version, it started off as a Century C-15, one of the originals. Not the C-15, the C-15. Then I replaced the lower, so all that really exists from the original C-15 is this buttstock and recoil. Uh, the upper and lower eventually I even replaced now, the buttstock, so of course it's kind of the AR-15 of Theseus. You don't see many of these, most people kind of gravitate towards the a3, or excuse me, the A4, which would be the A3 AR 15A3. There is a difference. Keep in mind, Colt had not released their the A4 to the civilian market. But I kind of still like the full length rifle. It's got a nice heft to it, nice weight and balance. Alrighty. Oh, a little more shooting. Definitely louder in the winter when it echoes more.
in last and most modern, we have a Colt well, LE most modern for which is the civilian legal semi-auto version of the M4 carbine. Has a four position adjustable stock which is common for these. You don't really see six positions on factory I'm trying to think. Other I'm pretty sure do, this is before still Walmart. Go with the really four, which is still an improvement over the two position you saw earlier in the X8. Just, they weren't that common even at that It has a removable time. carry handle with standard Picatinny rail underneath. Yeah, they were still shipping the same adjustable sights <laughs> as the A2. Has ovular hand guards which were added for better Will cooling. Has a reversible side sling swivel here. Can be you can grab out a roll pin and put it on this side if you need it there. Obviously the buttstock you can either mount it up here or down here as I have it right now. These come standard 30 round magazines, although I think the Air Force still likes to buy them with 20s once in a while. When has, you get them from Colt, A2 you lower. get metal mags has back the then, and a lot of times they still would come with 220s. For the but grenade they launcher, start to ship bayonet lug, A2 style flash hider. Most of you know what a Colt LE 6920 is, but At least the reason I like it, why these appeal to me when most other modern ARs do not, is it is a mil-spec gun for the most part, as close as, you know, legally can be allowed. It's a good gun. Of course, being a Colt, it's reliable, durable. Everything I've is I've never had one cam on me. Unfortunately, though these were quite reasonably priced earlier in the year, they've kind of become hard to get, which isn't uncommon. These tend to hit the market, cycle, be around for a while, and then disappear. Probably as Colt yeah. is filling current contracts. Right now, though, they're, they're going for a crazy amount. And it's probably just best off to wait, pick one up when they're back down to eleven or twelve hundred as they should be. For that money, they're a very good gun. I don't kind think I'd pay much more they're than fifteen because it is just a bone stock M4. And I don't mean but because of the panic that, that happened at the end Very of the happy with world. it. Had one of these for years. Just a good gun. A little more shooting. Pretty much it. For the ARs today, Happy New Year. This is kind of Resolution a New Year's video, 2013. Now we're going to go in because we're kind of freezing out here and drink a bit of vodka. That'll help with the cold. Ah, the M16A2 of Theseus. This started off, at least spiritually speaking, a long time ago as a Century Arms C15. Essentially, they had parts kits come in. I believe they were from South America. And because it was post-barrel band, they had to cut the barrels up and, of course, the lowers up. But that meant you had original Colt furniture, bolt group, upper. So all they needed to do was install a new barrel and then put it on a lower. That's where I began. Of course, the parts, being surplus, had some scrapes and scratches. But that was okay. Then I discovered a... Um, a Colt upper, complete upper, with original Colt chrome lined 1 and 7 twist barrel. So I, I took the original Century upper off, put that on, keeping the lower and the butt stock. But then I would swap lowers a couple of times, eventually ending up with a Colt A4 lower. Actually, the reason I took the original C15 lower off, the ATM lower, was because I think a customer needed one because they lived in a band state. So I swapped lowers and put all the parts off. Anyway, it's on an A4 lower. It would be nice if it said A2, but the problem there is a lot of the A2s either still have the large front pivot pin or they have the small pin, but it's the kind without the, the um, detent for the front push pin, and it uses the screw to hold it in. So, oh well, it's fine. And I think the final piece I did replace was the buttstock. I ended up with an unissued stock I put on here, finally kind of getting rid of the surplus one. So yeah, over time, my A2 has matured and improved a bit. It's also a good, fun shooter. In silhouette, looks very similar to an A1, but in detail, most of the parts are actually different. Check it out if you haven't. There are some cool similarities and a lot more cool differences. And just as I compared A1 and A2 rifles, having an XM177 carbine and an M4 carbine, the two major carbines, 
It's always been important to me. And I've had a few different Colts over the years. Of course, this has a true four position stock, as we mentioned, on a mil spec tube. Has the M4 Pro Foul 1 and 7 twist barrel. You know the deal, we've already talked about it. It looks very similar to what we saw in the video, but it's actually a different gun. My original, my first LE 6920, was bought back when they still had the law enforcement carbine restricted markings on the Magwell. Then they started going to the M4 markings. I prefer the M4, and a lot of other people preferred the restricted markings. So you see where this is going. I sold my restricted marked gun and replaced it with an M4 marked lower. And made a few other things. No, it's just a good old M4. Keep in mind, back when I recorded that video, things like the uh, the SOCOM were, were brand new. The, the Colt SOCOM 1 and 2 were just coming out, and maybe they weren't even out yet. They ran around that time, and uh, really news of the M4A1 wasn't widely known. At the time, this was really one of the most advanced U.S. military-style carbines. Of course, today it's effectively retro like the rest. And that kind of goes to show you that my taste in ARs really hasn't changed. Regardless if we're talking building, you know, collecting, shooting, studying, I like the retro guns. I certainly like the more mil-spec style AR-15s. That's not changed. Maybe my interest has expanded to newer guns, but the retro guns are really what got me into the AR-15 game hardcore. Before, the retro market really exploded around 2006, 2007 for the first time. I had one or two ARs, but meh. But once you could start getting lowers and different custom-made parts, as I mentioned back then, Brick was one of the preeminent makers of cool retro-style parts. That interested me. And uh, not really sure why it took us so long to do a, the first AR-15 video on the channel. As you saw, I had a few ARs. I mean, not a crazy number, maybe a total of half a dozen back then. Not a whole lot less than I have today. But I have upgraded them. Again, really, none of the guns featured in that video 12 years ago are the same. Although I still have bits and pieces. Again, the bolt carrier, some hand guards, an upper, a buttstock maybe. And of course, magazines, which is part of what I had to edit the video for. But uh, yeah, we showed some AK love. And I figured it was time to show the first uh, AR love. So what do you think? How are you liking this series? And I think I'm going to open it up to Patreons, see what ones they'd like to go over next. Why not? So if you'd like to help support us, check out Patreon, or join in one of our live streams. I'll probably start doing those quite soon after our rest. This is Misha, and hope you are having a great beginning to 2024. Catch you very soon next time.